you ever wonder why it is that the church grows faster than you have money to staff it? I mean, you'd think the Lord would kind of flip that, wouldn't you, and make it an easier to make the decision or when to hire? Well, in today's episode of Church Tips Podcast, we're going to talk about exactly that subject and help you get there. Here we go. As you've probably heard from some of the other stories I've shared, I started Summit Park Church, helped start Summit Park Church uh, a number of years ago. We moved up from Springfield, Missouri to Kansas City, Missouri, yep. uh, quit, quit the job there, the pastoral position there in Springfield to start uh, the church here in Kansas City. And uh, as we began going the first few months of, of the church, uh, uh, my friend and our fellow lead pastor, uh, Scott, was the only person who was a full-time paid person for the church. Yep. And in any church plant or, you know, in most churches as a whole, you're always kind of wondering, well, when can I get to the point where I might be able to hire another person? That was yeah. the point we were at and wondering when, at what point were we going to be able to do that? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so there were some things we started figuring out and I was overseeing the budget for the church, but I was doing that on a voluntary basis. You and I are working together. Yeah. And so I was doing that kind of on the side. And trying to figure out how do we know at what point do we do that? You're looking at the money, you're looking at all the different things. And so today we want to talk to you about some ways that you can know when to hire another church employee because this is something that's helpful. It doesn't matter whether you have uh, one pa- person or maybe you don't even have an, a, a full time pastor yet and you're looking to maybe hire that f- pastor full time. Uh, or it could be adding another staff member. How do you know when to do that? So we're going to be talking about that today, giving you some ways to help determine uh, when, at what point that that ha- takes place. You know, and we we covered a little bit of this subject back, uh, oh man, it's been a few weeks ago, in episode 56, paying stipends to keep people. Because yeah. I think that is a way that you got started, uh, even on your end. Yeah. Uh, so that'd be a good episode uh, for you to go uh, listen to, watch if you'd like, before you, even you watch this one. But anyway, let's, uh, let's get into the... Uh, I think we've got four yeah. or five points here we want to talk about. So do what do you got? Well, the first is to evaluate the need. So you have to figure out what is the need. And there's a few things that you, you might have. First of all, there's the intangible, that just that um, that innate sense. What do you feel? What's that intuition saying huh. in terms of, you know, at what point do we need to pull the trigger and make something happen here? Uh, but then there's other, uh, you know, metrics you might look at, whether it be the attendance, you know, do you, does the attendance, has there been a, a growth in attendance that merits the need for uh, another hire? Uh, is there potential growth coming that you see? And because of this potential growth, this is going to potentially merit another hire. Those are some things you just need to look at. So you have to kind of have this, there's an evaluation period, really, yeah, yeah. where, you're, you're really trying to look and see, okay, can we do this? Should we do this? Why do we need to do this? And that's the first thing. Well, and on that, Jonathan, what do you recommend in terms of do you, do you staff for growth or is the, does the staffing follow the growth? Well, I'm a proponent of the staffing following the growth. Yeah, yeah. I think churches can get in a dangerous place when they, when they staff for growth. And then it doesn't happen. Uh, and it doesn't happen. Then all of a sudden now you've got an extra obligation. Well, they're bloated. And they get bloated. You're bloated. Yeah. And, and you're talking about people's livelihood. They're yeah. talking about, you're talking about supporting their family yeah. financially. Yeah. And so the last thing you want to do is staff for growth. And then you realize the growth didn't come like you thought. And now you're stuck. You're actually in a bad place. You might have to even let that person go. Let's not commit people. And that is miserable. Yeah. Let's not commit to people financially that you're going to support them. Uh, as the, as an employee until you know mm-hmm. that you yeah. absolutely need it. Yeah. So that's why I'm a proponent of let's wait yeah. and, and stretch the current staff we have. If you have staff or if it's just the one pastor, stretch by doing the volunteers. Again, check out the episode 56 on um, the stipend Stipends. idea because that's a way to kind of help you know, stretch things out further before you have to take the plunge and fire, hire someone full time. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so you evaluate the need, then right on the heels of that, number two is to to check these key metrics. Yeah. And so you got to be looking at the money. How much money do you have in the bank? How much money is coming in on a monthly basis? Do you have the margin from a percentage wise to be able to support another person? Right. Um, what would be the return on investment? Mm-hmm. This is one of the things we don't talk a lot about, but but we need to. We need to. If I'm going to spend. X number of dollars a year on a new employee. What is that? How is that going to help us as a church yeah. um, get further ahead? Where how we need to be ahead? Oh, that's exactly right. Yeah. In fact, I, I had a I had a buddy of mine one time back in Ohio, and he was talking to me. He said, "Man, you know, when he thinks about paying for staff members, he says sometimes staff members, 
you know, get a sense of entitlement that I just automatically get this uh, raise or money. He said, I feel like I want to start paying them on commission because I want to see, are you, are you returning on my investment? Uh-huh. Are, are what you do, is what you're doing making the return on the investment? That's probably a whole other couple of there, episodes there on the return on investment. That's you know, right. You know, a, um, another thing to, to put in here, and uh, well, I'm going to mention it here, not that it's third on the list, but is to pray for wisdom. Uh, and sometimes as pastors, we could say, okay, yeah, I got that part. But I'm, I'm talking about literally stopping long enough to pray for wisdom. Sometimes yeah. we can think that this is just a, this is a, um, a human decision. It's a mechanics. It's a, it's a human mm-hmm. resource issue. And, and it is, yeah. but it is first and foremost, most a spiritual decision. Yeah. You know, if you're going to Jonathan reference, you know, you're going to you're going to bring somebody on uh, who is going to work alongside you. Uh, we get the human resource part of that, but it's a spiritual connection. It's a spiritual journey, and you need to have this thing absolutely covered yeah. with God's wisdom. No offense, friend, you're not that smart. I'm not that smart. Yeah. He's not that smart. We need the Lord. You need the Lord to go before you yeah. when you're going to contemplate a higher. So you've got to pray for wisdom. Yep. Uh, the the fourth thing is to look for the right person, and uh, you know you want to find a person who feels called, mm-hmm. uh, not just someone who's looking for a job. Right. And there's a difference there between is. someone who's called and someone who's looking for a job. And so it's very important for us to make sure we're finding people who have that passion and desire to serve the local church yep. on a vocational level, exactly, and not just because they're desperate for a job and like, oh, I might like to try ministry. It's something yeah. different. You know, there's a difference in there. And so you want to make sure you look for that. And then, of course, you want to make sure they've got the skills and competency and all those um, different components that are important uh, for uh, this particular role that you feel like yep. you need to, yep. f- to fit. Exactly. You know, at the end of the day, you know, we talk about these things you need to do. But at the end of the day, guess what you need to do? Hmm. Make the hire. Uh, you know, yeah. once you've got your metrics in place, you, you've you prayed, you've you've identified a called person, you've just walked this, you know that this is going to this is gonna be a, a create a good return yeah. on investment. All these things we've talked about, mm-hmm. you got to make the hire. That's right. You, you, you can't be paralyzed by analysis. Um, you've got to act. Yeah. And, and that, but I will tell you. And churches and uh, pastors are notorious for not doing this well. Set your expectations. Don't go into this, oh, yeah, wow, this is going to be great. Wow, well, that's yeah. cool. Glad to have you, blah, blah, blah. No, set the expectations. Yes, it's a spiritual hire. Yes, it's a partnership in that way. There's also the component of what you expect. Mm-hmm. So uh, set the expectations, expect the return on investment, yeah. and you're going to watch God do some very, very good things. That's right. So let's do a quick recap. Yep, there good. are five things we just talked about. First, you evaluate the need, then you check your metrics, then you pray for wisdom. You also look for the person and then make the hire. And when you do these things, you're going to be positioned for finding the right people, putting the right people in place at the right time, not too early, not too late, just at the time that you need in order to move the ministry forward. Yeah, that's good. You know, uh, we encourage you as a pastor, while we talk about these things and they can feel mechanical and spiritual, there is a role that you have as a leader mm. to get better as a leader. That's good. And we really encourage you. Uh, Jonathan created here a few months ago the Four Secrets Masterclass. And we encourage you to go just go to leaders.church forward slash secrets. And uh, you can sign up for the masterclass. It's just a few minutes shy of an hour long where you can walk through uh, four different secrets that are going to help you be a better leader. Because as you're a better leader, your church is going to be able to be stage for, uh, set the stage for growth. Yep. Growing churches are led by growing pastors. And if you're not growing, church is not going to grow. So all these things we talked yep. about uh, aren't going to work if you're not growing yeah. as a leader. So go to leaders.church slash secrets, jump right in there. Uh, right. Also, uh, go to, uh, certainly uh, go uh, subscribe to the uh, uh, podcast platform that uh, you uh, you like and enjoy on uh, YouTube. And if you would be willing to rate and review us, we'd be honored that you would do that. We have yeah. a review here from PD Pastor who said, Dick and Jonathan have a way of making complicated, complicated things simple. Their tips and principles work for any leader or church excited about this podcast. Well, cool. thank you, PD Pastor, for doing uh, writing that review. If you write a review, who knows? We may read your review in the days, weeks, or months to come. Anything else to add, Jonathan? That's it. I think we're good to go. Thanks so much for spending some time with us today. Make it a great one and be blessed. Hey, Jonathan here. Real quick before you go. 
everything in your ministry rises and falls on your leadership. So investing in your leadership is essential to staying healthy and growing the ministry. And that's why I want to invite you to join us inside the Leaders.Church membership. This online streaming service for pastors gives you access to more than 300 videos plus training material to level up your leadership and improve your ministry skills. If you'd like to do that, I want to invite you to go to leaders.church slash boost. Again, that's leaders.church slash boost. Well, thanks again for joining us on the Church Tips Podcast. We'll look forward to seeing you next time.